In this quick demo, I'm going to walk you through three basic steps. Number one, how to create this logical interface called the Microsoft Loopback interface. Secondly, how to give it an IP address. And third, how to get the interface with its IP address logically working inside of your GNS3 network. So you can actually have your PC sitting on your local segments with your routers. You can ping them, you can tell that to them, you can use uh, SDM or the CCP or anything else you want to do as far as direct interaction because your PC will literally be on the same network with the virtualized uh, routing environment. Let's take a look at those three steps. The first one is to create the actual loopback interface. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to run this tool called the Hardware Wizard, hdwwiz.exe. Press enter, and that brings up the Hardware Wizard. If you can find that through some other method and double click on it through the, uh, you know, file manager, that works fine. Doesn't matter how you get there, but that's a quick and easy way to bring it up. Then you're going to say yes. And you're going to say, I want to install the hardware manually. Please don't auto-select or try to find new hardware that's been installed. Let me do it from a list. That's the second bullet right here. So you say next, and then you choose that you want to add, scroll down, a network adapter. And then you're going to say next, and you want to choose the Microsoft flavor, and you're going to choose the loopback adapter, just like have I, as I have highlighted right here. Once you've done that, you click next a couple of times, and poof! you now have this new Microsoft Loopback Network Interface. The next step is to go ahead and configure it with an IP address. So I already have my Loopback Interface configured, so I don't want to add another one. So I'm going to stop short of clicking Next a couple more times, and let's go next to configuring the IP address on that interface. Now there's a couple of different ways of getting to your network adapter configuration. Uh, on XP and Vista and Windows 7, it's a little bit different. But regardless, if you right click or go to uh, Control Panel, go to Networking, and go to Modify the Properties of a Network Interface, you will, once you get to that point, here in Windows 7 it's Network and Sharing and Change Adapter Settings. Once you get to the point where it's showing you all of your interfaces, you'd want to go to your Loopback Interface that you just created and right click on it and specify Properties. That will give you the opportunity to configure an IP address on it. And go down to IPv4, Click on properties of the IP address for IP version 4, and then put in an IP address. Now, it doesn't really matter what IP address you use, but please jot it down because we're going to want to use a IP address that's in the same subnet that's uh, neighboring with the router that's next to it. So just be aware that I'm going to use 900 network here, and I'm going to use the 900 network up on my router as well when I connect them up. So I've got that piece set. The next step is to go ahead and launch GNS3, and we're going to go configure a router to work in conjunction with this logical interface. Let's do that right now. Here in GNS3, I've got a simple router up and running. It has two Ethernet interfaces. We can hover over that to see that as well. Uh, I think we could hover over it. There we go. So it's got uh, FA00 and FA01, and we're not connected logically to anything yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a cloud. So you go to your cloud object, drag it over, and the cloud, hmm, it's called C2. I'm going to change the name of that. I'm going to change the host name. I'm going to call it uh, Loopback. So I'm gonna, you can call it whatever you'd like. I'm going to call it loopback because this is going to represent my loopback interface that I'm using off of my PC, the one we just created with 9.0.0.9 as the IP address. I'm going to double click on that loopback interface or this cloud and go to the configuration of it and check this out right here. If I click down on the, this is all the interfaces that I have to choose from and they're representing the actual interfaces on my machine. See this one right here where it says um, Microsoft Loopback Driver on Localhost, Local Area Connection 2. That's the one I want, so I'll highlight that, click on Add, and now that logical interface, my Loopback interface, is going to be the logical interface for that cloud. So again, I just did the drop down highlighted my Microsoft Loopback interface, and then clicked on Add, and it put it in the list. Once I click on OK at the bottom, now that's the property of that cloud. 
Now, how do I connect R1 to my local PC or my loopback? I simply go to the tool for it. I'll say manual connection. I'll say I want to go from FA00 to, huh, gee, that long string represents my Microsoft loopback interface. I'm going to go right there, and I'm connected in. Last but not least, we need to make sure we configure FA00 on R1 to be in that 9 network as well. So we could right-click on R1, bring up the console window for him, and right here we go to config T, interface FA0 slash 0, a no shutdown, IP address, we'll give him 9.0.0.1, and with any luck we might even be able to do a ping here. So now there, there could be firewalls in place on your Microsoft machine that's not allowing any inbound connections that the PC didn't source. So you may have local virus slash firewall software preventing connectivity. You might have Windows built-in firewall software preventing connectivity. There's several options for it to not work. Let's just go ahead and give it a ping though. Ping to 9.0.0.9. That is the IP address of my PC. And, oh, there we go. So we lost one ping on the ARP resolution, and now we're good to go. So I should be able also now to go to my command prompt here. This is my command prompt on my PC, and I should be able to, uh, let me bring this over so you can see it. I should be able to ping that direction too, 9.0.0.1. Sure enough, and I've got my connectivity. So with that connectivity, now what can I do? Well, now you could basically you could telnet in. You could run uh, SSH from your PC. If you're doing a security lab, you could launch attack tools and everything else. One other tip, because I have a few more moments. If um, my network, if I wanted to reach other devices behind R1, I could do this as well. I could do, I could add a static route, and I could say, for example, uh, route add and I could say to get to let's say behind my network I was using the 10.10 .10 subnet I could say to get to 10.10 .10 mask 255.255.0.0 go ahead and use 9.0.0.1 dash p and I'll leave this up here for a moment and what that's going to do for me if I press enter that's going to create a static persistent route on my PC that says hey Mr. PC to get to 10.10 anything use 9001 as your next hop to get there. And that way you could have full reachability into your entire GNS network if it was the 1010 um, without having to create multiple clouds around your network, which you could also do. You could create a cloud off each router, but it's more overhead and the CPU usually doesn't like that. So thanks for watching, and these are the three basic steps of getting GNS3 and your PC directly connected. Create the Microsoft Loopback, give it an IP address, set up a cloud, and associate that cloud with your loopback interface. And that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody.